I'm going to now do some blocking in Maya, and I'm also going to be importing an image sequence for our video reference that we can follow along with. So first I'm going to check some of my settings. I always want to make sure that this uh, auto key down here is highlighted red, and then I'm going to click on this white animation preferences box. I'm going to make sure that all my settings are correct. So if you switch to a new computer, uh, often Maya will have its default settings. So we want to make sure that we have the settings that work and not the ones that will cause us issues. So by default it will pop over to time slider here under playback. We'll want to make sure that it's real time 24 FPS. Any of the other options will give us issues when we animate. Next I want to jump up to under the settings. Just make sure this is also set to 24 FPS. And then under animation I'm going to make sure that my tangents are clicked to weighted tangents, and since I'm going to do blocking in this video, I'm going to switch these from auto to clamped for the in tangents and stepped for the out tangents. Lastly, I'm just going to double check and make sure that my undo is set to infinite just in case I make you know, more than 50 mistakes, uh, and then that should be it for now. So I'm going to hit save, make sure those settings are correct. Next I'm going to set my project folder, so I'll set set or go to file, set project, and I'll navigate to this image planes folder that I created. And I'll click set. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to import the Stuart rig, or I'm going to reference him actually, so I'll say create reference. And I'll click on this AM Stuart rig, rig version 01. And as he loads in here, I'll make sure that he works. I'll push F to frame all and then I'll push 6 on my keyboard to make sure that the textures are all linked and everything looks good. Now just as a, a reminder, every time we bring in Stuart here, we have to absolutely make sure that we click on this show menu and uncheck joints. Uh, for some reason Stuart's joints are selectable and if you animate without unchecking that, that can cause us major issues where it can just completely break the rig and we'll either have to do an animation transfer or start over. And you'll need to do that, do that for every viewport. So if you click the space bar once, you'll see all, you different, all of your different views here. I'm going to just click on each one, show, uncheck joints for each of these right here. All right, I'll go back to my uh, main port here. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my image sequence. So in a previous video, uh, I showed you how to create an image sequence from your video reference, and I'm going to show you how to import it. So I'm going to want to animate Stuart for this blocking from a side view here. So I can just hit F. I'm going to turn off my grid too because that can get annoying. You can either click this button right there, or you can go to show and uncheck grid. So first of all, since I'm going to do it from a side view, I'm going to go to Window, Outliner, and I'm going to find my side camera here. I'll minimize this for now. And then we're going to want to bring up the Attribute Editor. You can either click on the tab over here, or you can hit Control A a couple times until it shows up. Make sure you're under the Side Shape tab, and we're just going to navigate over here until we see environment. So if you have a bunch of stuff open here, you can either scroll down or you can just minimize these. I'll click on environment and what we're going to want to do is click on image plane, create, and you'll see it'll create this this big block in the background that's empty. And we're going to click under the image shape, image plane shape one, attributes, see where there's image name, we'll click on the folder right next to that and we'll navigate to I had created it in the assets folder and then there's two different folders one I had created using the QuickTime and one I created using the After Effects either one will be fine but you'll just double click that click on the very first image and then click open and then there are some settings we need to check so first of all we'll switch display mode to RGB then we'll make sure to click use image sequence now you may notice that our image sequence down here is really tiny and that's just by nature of the fact that Stuart is a very large rig and our image sequence just defaults to certain uh, sizes so we'll if you select it you can zoom in and just highlight the image sequence you can click on any of your uh, tools here your move tool with the W, your rotate tool with the E or your scale tool with the R 
and you can move it out of the way and then you can scale it up in case you have a glitch where you can't scale it just click away and then click on it again and retry sometimes there will be a weird setting that'll that'll activate and it won't register your scaling so like I said just click away click back so I'm just gonna move it off to the side here and I'll just kinda scale it up to however I see fit uh, a couple other things that are very useful uh, we're gonna start our blocking roughly from like frame 19 here but you'll notice that from frame 1 to 18 there's not a whole lot that we're gonna see from a side view so what we can do is we can make sure you have your image plane selected we can scroll down to this frame offset and we can have this video start at a completely different moment so I want it to start on frame 19 so I'll say frame offset and since it starts at 0 uh, we'll just type in 20 see if that works looks like it might be one frame two so nineteen yeah okay so we'll type in nineteen there and it only goes to frame seventy seven but since we're offset it'll go to frame fifty eight here and you might get an error code down here and the reason that you get an error code is because the video ends at frame seventy eight or in our case fifty eight since we offset it so anything after that the video won't appear on our screen because the video has ended so just ignore that error uh, also down in this time slider, since I'm going to want to play this back and the animation is going to end around frame 60, I'm just going to click on uh, these options down here is where you can kind of show what your time frame is. I'm going to select this first box and I'm going to type in 60. If you want to sl select the other box and do that too, that's fine. Now we'll only see frames 1 to 60. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some animation blocking based off of some key poses that we see in our video reference here. So it's up to you how you want to position this video reference. Some people like to scale it up to the size of the character that you actually have on screen and animate on top of it. Some people like to have it off to the side. I'll just have it off to the side for now. And I'll hit 6 on my keyboard so I can see Stuart's textures. I'm going to hit Control A or click on this channel box tab. And I'm going to rotate Stuart in the Y by 180 degrees so he's facing the same way as our video reference in case you want Stuart to be facing the other way you can technically scale your video reference negatively and it'll play backwards I'm just gonna leave it this way so there's a couple things that we can do here so first of all, it's always good to highlight your entire character at the beginning of any scene and hit S. That way every single keyable attribute is keyframed. So as long as we have our auto frame here, auto key set, I can jump forward in time anywhere, pose the character out, and it'll save that pose. And then I'll jump back to one and he'll pop back to that other pose. Uh, other options include creating a character set, which we won't talk about right now, or to kind of just animate straight ahead, but I highly recommend to select your entire character, set a keyframe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my video reference and kind of get an idea of what I think the primary keyframes are for this blocking. So first of all, I'm going to pose them on frame 1, or what I see on the image on frame 19, and we can go out to our perspective view if we want to see we get, if you see this camera, uh, you can uh, move it out of the way or you could hide it. So you can either select it and press Control H or on a Mac it might be Command H or you can just move it out of the way. I'm going to hide it since I don't like seeing it. And I'll select my image plane and I'll just move it back in space a little bit. Uh, next, what I'll do, which is very useful whenever you do any animation, is to create a ground. So I'm going to go to create polygon primitives. I like to make sure the interactive creation is not check marked because then it'll just throw an image in there for me to edit right away. I'll click plane. And then if you want you can just press R and scale it up. You can move it side to side if you want. Whatever. That way that there's a ground. I'm going to also put this on a layer that way I can't accidentally animate it. Uh, first I'll rename this because I like to name all of my objects. I'll just name it ground. And then I'll make sure they have my object selected here. And you can either go to layers, 
create layer from selected or you can push this button right all the way to the right here and I'll, I also like to name my layer so I'll name this layer uh, scenery and I'll say save now what objects on layers will let you do is it allows you to hide them so this first box says V that stands for visible if you uncheck it it's no longer visible the second box will change the type of selectability it offers so the first one the T makes it uh, wireframe and unselectable and then the R stands for reference will make it unselectable but fully visible and that's what we want for now alright so next I'm gonna just kinda of pose out Stuart here roughly kinda of what I think this guy uh, is doing and he's on looks like he's on his his right foot forward so I'll just leave this foot or I'll click on this foot and start posing it out rotating it forward bending his body down moving it back We don't exactly know 100% what this foot is doing so I'm just gonna guess that it is kind of doing a foot roll where I can click on the attribute here and I can middle mouse drag out here and just kinda of do that and I'll move it back so it's nice and straight now typically what I would do is I would spend great care into the angle of the hips and the s spine and all of that stuff I'm just gonna do kinda of some rough stuff so in general I'm not gonna worry about too much in the rotation of the hips I will click this pelvic control here and I'll just kinda roughly mess around with it thinking okay if this legs forward therefore the the hip would be forward as well so I'll rotate it in that direction then I'll make sure to compensate with the foot by bringing that forward a little bit um, I'm gonna lower that rotation also his arms are back I'm not gonna worry about his fingers right now but his arms are back because he's about to try and swing his body into that jump Okay, and it's we can see our, our video reference off to the side here we can see that you know one arm is kinda off to the side a little bit and the other arm is a little more straight uh, we're not gonna worry about that too much typically it's good to on every single pose to take great care on as many attributes as you can and I'm just gonna uh, angle these shoulders back a little bit too. Alright, so I've got my first pose here. So I'm gonna check out my video reference and think to myself, okay, what's the, what's the next key pose? I think the next key pose is this extreme down here on frame 5, roughly. So I'll select all of Stuart on frame 5 and I'll hit S and then I'll start posing them like I see in the video reference. So this foot has come down now. Oops. This other foot is starting to lift off and come forward. his body is obviously starting to come down and what's nice is if you have a attribute selected you can push the period or comma buttons on your keyboard and you can flip back and forth between your two keys so I know that by seeing my video reference the character's head comes down therefore his whole body is coming down so I can just kinda rough that in and if I want I can go back and edit those two also his spine is starting to curve a little bit so I'm gonna select those three you can you can shift select attributes if I select one hold shift select another one select another one and then I can rotate all three of those kinda at the same time then I'm gonna need to compensate his his head a little bit because his head is in follow a line which I'm just gonna leave on his arms start to swing down again his elbows are coming up I won't worry about the fingers still but I'll do the wrists for the most part. His shoulders are obviously starting to come forward too. And 
I'll just kind of flip back and forth and see if I like, in general, how that is. I think that's okay. The spine could use a little bit more curving. Obviously, I need to adjust this pelvic rotation. It isn't quite as rotated as it should be. All right, and I'll just I'll stick with that for now. So then I'll I'll see what the next keyframe I think is. Which there's certainly many breakdowns, but the next primary keyframe I think is right here where both feet are in the contact position. So I'll select all of Stuart, I'll go to frame 9, and I'll hit S, and once again I'll start posing how I see Stuart here. And this foot's starting to foot roll. This other foot has already come forward, and obviously keep close in mind about the uh, knee controls here, you'll always have to kind of move those in front of the feet. And this foot's going to translate down and not be rotated anymore. And the body will obviously need to come forward here. And I'll come and see, and it looks like he's still kind of going down a little bit, so I'm going to rotate him forward, bring his hips down, rotate that pelvis control to kind of be roughly centered, but also forward a little bit. And I'm going to need to bring his arms up, because he's now grabbing the, it's hard to see in this video, but there's a box right there, same color as the background that he's going to push off from. And I'll bring this arm out do this. Now would be a good time for me to switch controls. Since he's going to plant his hands, I'm going to want to switch his hands to IK. Now IK is like his feet here, and his feet here, if, if they're in IK and you move them, it moves the whole leg there, but if you move the body, the legs don't move with the body. You see that? And the arms are in FK, meaning the arms will move like an action figure, and you got to move, move each individual joint here. But what I can do is I can switch. Stuart's got a very nice control here where I can select these two globes, go over to the channel box, down to snap IK, and uh, well, you might have to do them individually. So I'll select one at a time. Snap IK to IK, and you'll notice that the controls are different now. Snap K, IK to IK. And then I want to make sure that I select all of Stuart again and hit S. That way these two these controls right here, the, the diamonds plus the elbows are set. Now what I can do is I can move his body around and his arms will stay planted. And that's very useful if you want your character to plant their arms. Uh, and this, I'll take this opportunity to throw in a box here that he'll push off. So I'll go to create polygon primitives cube. I'll just move it out, kind of just roughly make it as big as I think it needs to be. Kind of eyeball it. You can always go in and edit it later. I'll just name this uh, box. And then I'll, I'll go over to your Mita Layer tab down here. Make sure my box is selected. I'm going to right click the scenery layer and I'll say Add Selected Objects. That'll make this unselectable again. Alright, so now I'm going to plant these hands down onto the box very roughly. I won't worry about the fingers still. Typically I would. Uh, pose the fingers as if they were planting down. Which I'll just kind of roughly put them in. Alright. And I'm going to check back with make sure that I'm satisfied with this pose. There are a few tweaks that I could make. Maybe rotating this body part up again, making sure that these shoulders make sense. And I'll be satisfied with that for now. So now I'm going to see what I think the next main keyframe is. 
and there's so many possibilities. So I think primarily the next major keyframe is right before he leaves the ground. So right here in frame 13, or in the video it's frame 32, his toe on his back foot there is just barely touching the ground. So I'm going to select Stuart, hit S, and I'm going to once again pose him like I think it is. So move his body up, his arms are going to be planted still. This foot here is going to be foot rolled until his uh, toe is just barely on. I could also go to foot break here and lower the foot break a little bit. Okay. So now this back foot, I'll get rid of the toe roll or foot roll and I'll start rotating it like this because it's in the air now. Drag him back. And for polishing purposes, I'll go to the toe tap and I'll just kind of drag that toe back. Also, the foot's kind of rotated and technically probably translated out a little bit. And I'm going to need to straighten his spine a little bit. So I'll select those three controls. And sometimes it's good to just zero out your rotations and then you can kind of just edit from there. I'm going to zero out the pelvic control too but I'm going to need to reshape it just a little bit. So those three spine controls, once again, I'll rotate them forward a little bit. Bring his neck up a little more, but bring the head down. The shoulders are starting to push off, so soon they'll be rotated in the opposite direction, but for now I'll just push him down. Let me rotate his body more so his arms aren't quite fully stretched out. See that there's a weird kind of stretch there. Sometimes you just kind of have to cheat it or kind of edit the pose and then go back and edit the previous pose. So this hand, I'd probably bring this this hand control closer right here. Rotate that around. Now if I go to my previous control, you notice that the arm slips when it should be planted. And actually, you know what, looking at my video reference, he doesn't quite plant his arms yet. It looks like he just barely touches the, the box and then starts to slide it. So it looks like his hands move all together. So we'll just take those and move them forward where they're supposed to be, roughly about there we'll say. And I need to bring this body forward. Bring the foot up so it's not so stretchy. Alright, so we'll keep moving here. If you'd like, it's always nice to kind of play what you've got so far. You can either just scrub through or you can click the play button. I'm going to see what the next main keyframe is, and I think it's... For sure this is a keyframe here, frame 21 or the picture at 40, but I think I'm going to need an in-between. So I'll kind of work backwards here. So I'll go to frame 21, and I'll select Stuart, and I'll hit S and I will looks like his hands aren't quite planted but on the fingertips so I'll I'll do that and once again normally I would shape the fingers but for now I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to get that that body shaped in correctly And he's got a big, he's got a nice strong arch in his back. So I'm going to make sure that I pay close attention to that. So I'm going to zero out these four controls, the three spine and the pelvic control. And I'm going to start from uh, the spine controls. 
and I'll rotate them back in nice and strong. And you can always kind of fix it after the fact. I'll make sure to bring this pelvic bone in. Then I'm going to rotate his main hips like this. Kind of compensate his his head and his neck. Make sure his head's down a little bit. Then I'm going to need to bring these feet up, obviously. So switch back to this control. I'll grab the knee control as well. These feet are starting to come up through here. Might need to move this knee control over there. Here's where IK can be a problem, even with the foot. So you really want this thigh to kind of be up, but the shin to be down. So there's a few things we could do. We could uh, switch the leg to FK. Then we'd have to worry about uh, switching it back, just like we did with the hands. Or we can just kind of cheat it. For now, I'm just going to cheat it, not worry too much. So I'll leave it like that for now. Maybe rotate it. Looks like he's got his foot inward, so I'll rotate that inward too. Get rid of that toe tap, or better yet, do the opposite toe tap. And it's not ideal, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Next foot, I'll bring that up. One, that one up too. First, I'll first move the knee roughly up. Okay, now the leg. It's a little different from the video reference, but I'm going to make that leg go forward. And it's not super pretty. In this case, I probably would switch the feet to IK or sorry to FK. But for now, I'm just going to leave it, just so we can see how blocking works. Alright, and you know what, let's move the body up higher so those arms are straightened out. And then likewise, we'll bring these feet up a little bit, and maybe a little forward. Alright. Once again, uh, I'll, I'll kind of work backwards and see if I need an in-between between those two. And you know what? I don't think I really do right now, actually. I think I'll just leave it for this blocking. So typically there would be an in-between. If you look at the video reference, maybe around frame 16 or 17. And we can always add that in later. Next keyframe I'll put is roughly kind of at the peak of his jump where he's not touching the box anymore. Maybe roughly around frame 26, so I'll highlight Stuart, hit S. Bring that body forward. Kind of start to untwist it a little bit. I'll just zero out the spine altogether so I can mess around with it. And you'll get some weird results, like Stuart looks like he's broken. Uh, right now, I'm going to select these two controls, and they're kind of hidden, so I went into wireframe mode by pressing 4. I'll switch them back to FK. All right, because his, his hands aren't planted anymore. I'll make sure to select Stuart again and hit S just to make sure that everything is selected. Those hands are going to be dragging behind him now. All right. So the body is still going to be curved forward a little bit, but not quite as much as it was. The feet are now 
coming forward along with the these knee controls. Oops. I'm going to zero out the rotations on these feet. I'll leave the translations, but get rid of the rotations. Also get rid of the foot rolls and the toe raise, toe tap, toe twist, all that stuff. So they're basically just flat. That way I can reshape them. The, f the body is really coming forward here. And these feet are coming forward more too. And obviously the arms are going to be dragging back. You're going to want to start to grab these shoulders and rotate those back as well. Heads down, necks down, and I'll just kind of flip back and forth and see if I'm decently satisfied. I made a much larger jump forward than he does, so I might control, select the feet and the hips, and just translate his entire body back and maybe down a little bit. All right, so let's see what the next keyframe is. I think it'll be right about here when he barely touches the ground. Frame 31, select Stuart, hit S. Now his feet, I'll just select both of his feet, go to the translate Y, type in zero, so he'll be on the ground here. I'll bring the knees down, and then I'll rotate those, or not rotate, but translate those feet forward. And obviously start to bring his body down. His hips are rotating backward. Oops. I'll start to straighten up his spine a little bit. I noticed that I started to get some awkward rotations in the spine here. So I'm going to zero those out, actually, all three of them. And then I'll, I'll rotate them just the way that I want, the spine and the pelvic controls. Bring them in here. All right. And the shoulders and the arms still continue to drag back, but the elbow is coming in. And when thinking about your posing, it's always good to think about your silhouette. Uh, in our case, you know, we're just kind of getting comfortable with the blocking, so I'm not going to worry about the silhouette too much. Because if you look at this video reference, his silhouette's not that great. You know, we've got the feet are kind of overlapped with each other. It looks like, you know, two arms are coming out from the same elbow. Those are things we'd consciously pay attention to when we're worried about animation. So we would exaggerate and change camera angles and those sorts of things. But for now, I'm just going to match the video reference. His head's starting to come up. 
I'll probably consider this pose good for now. Uh, next main key is probably his lowest point that he reaches roughly around 54 in the picture, so 34. I'll hit S. Uh, the feet have, I'm just going to zero out their rotations. And bring them forward a little bit. Oh, and I noticed that I made this mistake again. On frame 31, the feet are actually intersecting through the ground. So I'm going to need to select the feet and the body, bring those up until the feet are just like barely touching the ground there. Close enough. Maybe I would take one of the feet, get rid of the rotation altogether, get rid of the translate, and then do a foot roll like this. Then I'll go to the next pose. Consider that. All right. So his body's starting to come down, right? Like this. I oh, need to make sure we uh, find the wherever the knee controls went. They're kind of in his body here. Keeping track of these knee controls can be a little hard sometimes. Okay. So his body's starting to straighten up a little bit. So I'll just zero out the spine and the pelvic bone. Zero out his neck and his head. I'll zero out the arms too, just so I can kind of have a fresh, clean slate with those, and also the shoulders. And then I'll notice, okay, his his pelvic bone is kind of kind of rotating forward a little bit, and then obviously these three spine controls are still rotated forward. the arms are obviously down and the elbows have starting to straight out straighten out so I'll just zero those out all together zero out the wrists while I'm at it they're still kind of dragging back a little bit I'll drag the wrists too for a peel and overlap. And I'll just kind of rotate that head down a little bit. Call that good for now. Then he does this little hop into his final pose. So I'll go to frame 40 or 60 in the picture. Hit S on Stewart bring his body forward and take both leg feet and I'll do this foot roll to where they're just on their tippy toes like that. Arms are coming forward, wrists are coming forward. Head is starting to straighten out so I'll take that neck control straighten that out. Bring those shoulders forward a little bit. He may not actually rotate that or translate that much. So I'm going to go back to this one, raise him, and then this one and lower him. So the jump isn't that big. And then he's in the air. I'll 
I'll just jump to, I'll jump straight to 63 or 43. Select Stuart, hit S. Bring those feet forward. I'm going to kind of have both feet in the same spot roughly. A little bit. The foot roll is going to decrease. Body's going to straighten up. Chest is going to straighten up. Arms are starting to come down a little tiny bit. I'll call that good. And then I'm going to do the settle. And then I'll call the blocking mostly good for now. So let's jump to. Let's say the end here at 58, that's going to be roughly the same from 51. Okay, so I'll select all of Stuart, hit S on frame 51. I'm just going to zero out this foot roll on both feet. Going to bring his body down here to a relax. Bring both arms down to a relax. Make sure to relax these shoulders. Twist that pelvic control back a little bit. Straighten the rest of, you know, I'll, I'll click on this main hip control and I'll zero out the rotations, which looks like they are mostly rotated or zeroed out. And I'll select his spine controls. And I'll zero those out too. And then rotate them a little bit just for comfort. Reposition his body a little bit. Maybe offset one of those feet. Need to relax his arms a little better. All right, so there's most certainly a, a few frames in between where he's kind of bouncing but for this first pass of blocking, I'll call that good. So let's take a look in Maya. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to turn off my NURBS curves, which is under Show, NURBS curves. And then I'm going to also uncheck Image Planes. I'm going to make sure my render settings up here are set to a camera that I want. So I'll say presets HD 720, click close. And I'm going to frame up my camera. If I go to view, camera settings, resolution gate, make sure I've got my whole shot into view. Maybe for the sake of uh, a little better view. Maybe I don't just do a straight side view. So I'll, I'll switch to my perspective actually. I'll do the same thing. Camera settings, resolution gate, turn off my NURBS curves, turn off my image plane. Kind of zoom in here and we'll see what it looks like from kind of a three quarters angle roughly. We'll, we'll render both shots. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to do a turn off the resolution gate, say no gate, right click, play blast, make sure your options are set to format QT on Max, I think it's like EV Foundation, encoding PNG on the Max, I think it'll be just be H.264, quality all the way up, if selectable, scale all the way up, frame padding you can just leave. I'm gonna say remove temporary files is checked, 
uncheck save to file because I just want to watch it once before I save it. And we'll watch this on loop a couple times, see how it turned out. And in general, it looks pretty good. There's a few parts that look a little weird, and that's just kind of polishing, adding in some breakdowns. Uh, for instance, I don't like that his foot, I can't see his foot there, so I might just change my camera angle. Um, I also think having the ending work out a little better. So for instance, he's coming down right here. When he settles, it looks like his body doesn't come forward anymore, as if he hit a wall. So technically, his body would continue at the end, when his body comes down, it will go down, forward, and kind of settle back like this. That's an exaggeration. So, in between 43 and 51, I would have some poses where his body kind of leans forward and his arms are his arms are back to balance, and this is just an exaggeration. And then he'd come to settle. But, all in all, I'd say this is a pretty good, successful first pass. Uh, I'm going to render it from a side view. Also, and one thing you'll notice from side view, planes don't show up very well. So I'm going to click, select this plane. I'm going to click face, and I'm going to select the whole thing here. And I'll go to uh, edit mesh, face, extrude. I'm just going to drag down like this, right? And it looks like it turned black, which is... Annoying. Okay, so if you have that issue, better yet, let's just get rid of this plane altogether. We'll we'll put in something different. So I'm going to select that plane, delete it, go to create polygon primitives, cube, and I'll just scale that up to like, uh, let's see, in the X I'll do a thousand, in the Y I'll do five hundred, and in the Z I'll do a thousand. And then I'll translate it down by 200, negative 250. Then I'll just move it forward. Make sure it's selected. Right click, add to this scenery layer. Now it's unselectable if you make sure you're in the R there. Switch to this view. Turn off my NURBS curves. Go to camera settings. Turn off the resolution gate. I'm going to play blast that again. And we'll see what our final product looks like for our first plat pass of blocking. It's pretty good. So I like this view a lot better. Uh, it kind of has a little bit of issues with the silhouettes. Um, and obviously, like I said, there will be some breakdowns that you would need to add. But for the first pass of blocking, this gives us a really good example of what we're going to see. We completely understand what's going on. And the timing's not too bad. There's a, part, there's a few parts that are a little quick. So maybe from here to here I might space those out, or from here to here I might uh, space those out, or whatever. Overall it's got a good feel to it. And what's also nice is we can we can come back into Maya here. I can hit 7 on my keyboard to show my silhouettes. And then I can play Blast it again and see what it looks like with the silhouettes. If you can understand what's going on in silhouette, that's kind of a good sign. So yeah, in general, I still know what's going on. Timing's not perfect, but I think we're, we're finished for now on this first pass. Yeah, still plenty to be done, and polishing to be had, uh, but the first phase is complete. So I'm going to make sure, obviously you always want to save. I haven't saved throughout this entire video, but uh, you want to save all the way through. So I'm just going to call this blocking 001 save. And there we are.